Hi everyone, it's Nina. And as you can see, we're trying something new here with the reading research recap. So we're doing a video format instead of in writing. And instead of covering three articles in depth, I'm just gonna cover one that I think has really practical implications for the classroom. So either there's some key knowledge, some tools, some tips, something you can take from it and hopefully it'll inform you immediately or inform your teaching immediately instead of you know something super researchy that you know, doesn't apply to your classroom. So let's get started. The first one that I chose for this month is called Maximizing Small Group Reading Instruction. And this was published about a month, a month and a half ago in The Reading Teacher. And this is not a um, super researchy article. It's not even an experimental study. It is kind of like a state of the research on how to do small group instruction, or I should say an opinion piece on how to do instruction, small group instruction the right way. So why did I choose this one? Well, about two thirds of US teachers conduct small group instruction about a few times a week. The authors have um, list three things and they use the acronym, the ABCs. And A stands for assessment, B stands for basics and books, and C stands for corrective feedback. So let's go through each one of those. So A for assessment, which assessments do you want to use? When assessing, the authors recommend using effective, validated curriculum-based measures. For beginning readers, check phonemic awareness and decoding skills. If students can decode CBC words and read connected text pretty well, assess their fluency. If you find they are disfluent, try and diagnose the source. Is it word recognition, syllabication, or morphology? For comprehension measures, they can be less reliable than decoding or fluency measures, so also just use your observational skills to see what students need. Finally, groups should remain flexible and the authors recommend checking group composition every three to six weeks by using your progress monitoring data. All right, so B is for basics and books. There's a few key points from this section. So the first thing that you wanna make sure you're doing is that you're using fun, engaging, high interest books to teach the skill that children need help in. You can use decodable books some of the time. You don't have to use them all of the time if you're working on word recognition skills. For fluency, you can use engaging grade level text. And for comprehension strategies, let the book determine which strategy you're gonna work on. Also, this seems like a no brainer, but make sure you allow time for actual student reading in the small groups. All right, and lastly, C stands for corrective feedback. Make sure you're giving specific immediate and personalized feedback. To help with this, you can have pre-made post-it notes with a that's good, now this template already filled out and ready at hand. Also, make sure you take every opportunity to remind students about how much they have accomplished and how much they've grown. All right, guys, that's all that I have for you this month. Um, speaking of feedback, let us know how you like this new format. And I guess I'll see you guys next month. Bye.